Welcome to Look Learn Lead and kindly subscribe for updates. Hello everyone, this video is about IBPS IT Officer Mains exam and we will be discussing some important MCQs with explanation for operating systems in this video. Okay, let's move on to the first question. Uh, must, first question is related to banker's algorithm. Uh, the banker's algorithm is used to, there are four options, to rectify deadlock, to detect deadlock, to avoid or to solve. You all know that banker's al uh, algorithm is for deadlock avoidance and resource allocation okay here we have given avoidance option so our right option will be answer C so it is to avoid deadlock okay next move on to the next question that is which of the following memory unit that processor can access more rapidly that is that means which uh, memory unit is very near to the processor let's see the memory hierarchy first in the memory hierarchy we have uh, cache memory at the top okay main memory is below that and after that we have disks and tapes magnetic disks and magnetic tapes okay so it is the cache memory which is nearer to the this so our answer would be C okay cache memory let's move on to the next question the question is which of the following concept is based on preventing page faults so watch up what are page faults suppose we have uh, uh, we are searching for a page in the cache memory if the page is not there in the crash memory page is not there in the cache memory then we search for it in the main memory okay uh, the when we don't find a page in the cache memory here occurs page fault okay this is what page fault is so using which of these can we prevent page fault by using the working set working set means we make a set of all the pages set of pages which are required set of pages required so the answer would should be working set okay so to prevent page faults we you need to use working set next move to the next question a page fault occurs one now only we have discussed when the page is not found in the memory when page is not found in memory not found in memory so the page fault occurs so that would be answer D okay that the page is not found in the memory okay next move on to the next question bringing a page into a memory only when it is needed is called we all know it is demand paging but let's see there, there are some uh, words also which you need to discuss what is deadlock there is a term deadlock what is deadlock? Deadlock is, uh, suppose we have two processes, three processes, P1, P2, P3, okay, and process P1 is waiting for some resources that is hold by process P2, and P2 is waiting for some resources that is hold by P3, and P3 is waiting for some resources that is hold by P1. So this situation is called deadlock, okay. Watch is page fault. The, now we have discussed only page fault is uh, occurs when the requested page is not in main memory, okay. This we have discussed earlier. This we have discussed now. So the answer is demand paging. Demand paging is when we need a page, uh, then only that page is brought into the memory. That is demand paging. The answer is D. Let's move on to the next question. That is first in first out scheduling. Uh, okay, we all know what is first in first out. Okay, first in first out scheduling means if the process P1 has arrived first, it would be served first. Uh, P2 has arrived, then P2 would be served. P3 would uh, has arrived, then P3 would be served. So it is a non-preemptive scheduling. Non-preemptive. Okay, non-preemptive. What is non-preemptive? If uh, even if the more uh, priority based uh, process has arrived, then also P1 would complete then then only P2 would start that is if P1 has arrived first we would complete the execution then only P2 would start P2 would complete its execution then only P3 would start that is P2 cannot preempt P1 cannot preempt means cannot replace or cannot halt P1 so the answer is non preemptive scheduling FIFO is non preemptive scheduling what can be a preemptive scheduling Preemptive scheduling is uh, such as priority scheduling is a preemptive scheduling. Priority scheduling is preemptive. How? If suppose a process P1, it is of lower priority. Okay. Then P2 arrives of higher priority. Then P2 would 
PM to P, PM to P1, that is P1 would stop executing and P2 would take its place. That is called preemptive scheduling. But P4, but in the case of P4, it is non-preemptive. So our answer is non-preemptive scheduling. Okay, let's move on to the next question. That is a necessary condition we read before deadlock. We all know that there are four conditions for deadlock. First is mutual exclusion. Okay, mutual exclusion is everywhere. Oh, it is no mutual exclusion. So A cannot be the right right option. Okay. So second is hold and wait. Hold and wait is here and here. So in B it is no hold and wait. So B cannot be a right option. And the third is no preemption. So here it is preemption. So D cannot be the right option. So our option would be C. The necessary condition for deadlock are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption, and circular wait. Okay. Well, I said what is circular waiting? P1 is waiting for P2 to release. P2 is waiting for P3 to release. And P3 is waiting for P1 to release. This is circular waiting. What is no preemption? No preemption is P1 would P2 would not preempt P1. It would keep on keep on waiting, but it would not overtake P1. That is no preemption. Okay. Hold and wait is it would hold. Suppose it has resource R1, but it requires resource R2. P2 has resource R2. Okay. It would not release R1. It would hold R1 and it wait for R2. Okay, P2 is a process that requires two resources to complete R1 and R2. But P1 is holding R2, P2 is holding R1. They both are not releasing. They are holding and waiting for the other resource. That is called hold and wait. What is mutual exclusion? Mutual exclusion means if, the, if there is a resource R1, R1 can be used by either P1 or by P2. It is mutually exclusive. The resources are mutually exclusive. They cannot be used by both. Okay, they cannot be used by both. Okay, that is called mutual exclusion. The answer is C, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. Let's move on to the next question. That is, uh, the what does the NTF, NTFS stand for? It is, uh, no, it is a simple uh, acronym, non-terminated file system. Okay, next move on to the next question. That is with the segmentation, if there are 64 segments, and the maximum segment file size is 512. The length of logical address would be in bits. We have 64. So 64 can be written as 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 8 to the 16, 16 to the 32, 32 to the 64. It is 6, 2 to the power 6. 64 can be written as 2 to the power 6. Okay. And 512 can be written as 2 to the power 9. Okay, this is this. So, what would be the length of logical address? Logical address would be 6 plus 9, which would be equal to 15 bits. Okay, how I calculated it? Let's see. See, the, for number of segments, we need 6 bits to de define segments. 6 bits for segments, because there are 64 segments. Okay, for uh, word, for number of words, we need 9 bit. 9 bit for words okay so the total is 9 plus 6 it is 15 bits so answer would be C 15 bits okay let's move on to the next during networking the process of processor asking each host that it want to send a message is called it is clearly polling polling what is polling uh, there is uh, there is a uh, there is a system or a processor which ask each host suppose it has two host or three host or n host it asks each host if it wants send some message or not if you want to send some message or not this process is called polling process it is called polling okay so the answer would be d polling okay like uh, this this is all about uh, operating system questions uh, please be, be with us i would be uploading more questions and various different topics for uh, it officer examination thank you